شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله After praising Allah extolling Allah and lauding Allah and beseeching the assistance and forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and after sending salutations of the best type on our noble prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and after making those statements that the prophet alayhi salatu wasalam used to say surely the best speech is the book of Allah and the best guidance is the guidance of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the worst of all affairs in this deen are newly invented matters for every newly invented matter is an innovation every innovation is a going astray and every astray is in the hellfire I then thank you the Muslims here and the United Kingdom for inviting me a second time to talk to you about this deen of Islam I feel sorry for the Muslims in general here and one Muslim specifically and all of these things that I feel sorry about are things that are good I feel sorry that the Muslims had to be subjected to some of the shenanigans of probably someone other than the people of Islam because I don't it would be unimaginable that a Muslim would even think that another Muslim would have done what we think the Muslims did. To send a bomb scare or a bomb threat. So I feel sorry for any of us that had to be subjected to that, not the leaving the building, but the thought that a Muslim would do that. Just because of some partisanship or some isbiya or some ideology yes that person probably did it or those people probably did it because this is a dhun this is speculation and shaitan uses this so I feel sorry for anyone that would think automatically with su'udhun with bad thoughts about their brothers in Islam that it was a Muslim that did this that's in general that we had to be subjected to that the specific person that I feel sorry for is the young brother on my left with all of these gadgets in front of him. I don't know how he's going to do it. <laughs> I, I, I don't know how he's going to do it. But inshallah, I say to him as the little child told his mother in the very beautiful story in Tafsir Surah Al-Buruj where he told his mother فَاتَّقِ اللَّهِ وَاصْبِرِي فَإِنَّكِ عَلَى الْحَقِّ Fear Allah, and of course that was in the feminine form, Fear Allah, وَاصْبِر, be patient, because surely you are on the truth. InshaAllah. And may Allah help you. <laughs> We've been asked to come all of these thousands of nautical miles to talk about the truth of which it's plain and simple. I had no idea that the title of this lecture was the truth, plain and simple, and the brothers are putting their heads down. They feel bad now. Until I saw it on the flyer outside. I had no idea. But that's the truth. The truth is plain and simple. And we who have been guided to Islam we who have been guided to Islam, whether they were reverts to Islam, like me, a former Pentecostal Christian, then moving on to another color of kufr, leaving from lime green kufr, stepping to the nation, so-called nation of Islam, to Kelly green kufr, 
and then coming to Islam, or those of you who have strayed slightly or strayed greatly, who were born Muslims and are now what is called here in this country and in other places in the West, non-practicing Muslims, as though you're a doctor who has retired from his practice. Islam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has guided us to Islam, returned us to Islam, restored Islam in our hearts. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us this thing called Islam and we didn't deserve it. In the strict sense of the word, we didn't deserve it. We deserved it because He loves us and He's pleased to give us this deen, which is the truth, plain and simple. And we hope that those people who are non-Muslims here listen to these words attentively. Not just the Muslims have been given this, that they may or may not deserve. Allah knows best, but He was pleased as a favor to give us the human being, not Muslim, El Islam. That favor, I think we need to look at, which is called the truth. One of the words that are synonymous for Islam, or as in the construct phrase, Deen al the religion of truth, that Islam that is sent to all human beings, no matter what color they may be, how tall, how short, the texture of their skin, the color of their eyes, the texture of their hair, no matter who or what they may be, this Islam is for all of us. And I'd like to say, to coin the phrase of one misguided individual who used to be the President of the United States, I'd like to change it around and add some words to what he said. When he, John F. Kennedy said, ask not what your country can do for you, but ask what you can do for your country. I'd like to ask the same question, but on a higher level. Ask not what Islam can do for you, but you should ask what you can do for Islam, because the favor is on you. You did not give Allah anything for your acceptance to Islam, or your reversion to Islam, your reverting to Islam, or your returning to practice Islam. You did not give Allah any favor whatsoever. Whatsoever. It is Islam. It is Allah that has favored you. And this is a big mistake by many Muslims. In our journey through this temporal life, we start thinking that I'm this, I'm that. I'm doing this. I, I'm doing Islam a favor. No. You're not doing Islam anything. Islam has done it for you. And Allah has allowed Islam to come into your lives, to come into my life, to come into our hearts, to practice it for the benefit, betterment of ourselves. Allah is not decreased nor increased on anything that we do in Islam. It is only for our benefit if we take the prescription, follow the prescription correctly, take the right dosage, the way the doctor has prescribed it. This thing called Islam that we probably, the majority of us, the vast majority of us sitting here listening to my voice, claim to be affiliated with, claim to attribute ourselves to, this Islam is a mercy. And you would never understand how much of a mercy it is until you have been in my shoes or people like me. Let me just give you an example, and we'll leave Christianity for a while. Let's step to the Kelly Green disbelief, from the lime green disbelief to the Kelly Green disbelief, which is the so-called nation of Islam, to show you the benefit that probably many of you have by having mothers that are Muslims, and fathers that are Muslims, and grandfathers that are Muslims, 
and great grandfathers and great grandmothers that are Muslims. Generations of Islam. And Allah knows best. Some of you already know these things, but I just want to share with you some of my experiences and my beliefs just briefly before Allah favored me with Islam so that I may look back in retrospect and appreciate, appreciate calling myself a Muslim. In the so-called nation of Islam, as we already know, because I'm sure you have some of them here in the United Kingdom, we used to believe that God was a man, similar to Christianity. Although we gave that God a different color. Many Christians give that God a white face, unjustifiably. We gave that God a black face, unjustifiably. Because we know now as Muslims, he's neither white nor black. He has no color because colors are created. We know that he has no needs and human beings, male or female, has needs. But here, the person standing in front of you, in front of this microphone, used to believe that the creator of the heavens and the earth, the creator of the heavens and the earth, and this is just 26 years ago I believe this, this is a short time ago, that Allah was born on February 26th out of the womb of a white woman, the father of that baby who is God, which is the belief of Louis Farrakhan to this day, was a black man named Alfonso, and the mother of God, her name was Baby G. G, the letter G. This is the belief of Louis Farrakhan then and now. This is what I believe. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows me to drive down the street, going to my job, or going home, or going to the masjid, and see one of these people selling the newspapers, the final call, how do I look at that individual? How do I look at that individual whom I know does not understand the truth, which is plain and simple? Because it's so plain and simple to understand that the creator of the heavens and the earth can't be himself created. He's not subject to time and space or diseases. He's not subject to eating or sleeping, becoming tired, having fatigue. He's not subject to someone giving birth to him and placenta or afterbirth being removed from his skin if we know anything about the nature of God, he doesn't have skin. At least he hasn't informed us that he has. How could it be that when I see these people who are selling these newspapers, thinking that they have the truth, plain and simple, and for lack of better words, taunt them, scream at them, disrespect them, when I myself, just 26 years ago, believed the same thing. And probably that individual, and where I come from, in many cases, that individual who's selling that newspaper, probably was influenced by the person standing in front of you. May Allah forgive me because at least 60% of the people in the city that I was born and reared in came to that stuff because of me. So now when I see those type of people, when I'm walking through the street or riding through the street, I see those type of people. Of course, my, the hatred that I have in my heart for their disbelief should be there. Because the truth is plain and simple. But I should also have some love for Allah, Jalla Jalaluhu, for guiding me to Islam and the Sunnah. And we must say, Alhamdulillahi alladhi hadana ila islami wa sunnah. Praise be to Allah who guided us to Islam and the Sunnah. I must look at those people and have a stronger love for Allah. Al Wadud, Al Ghafur, Al Rahman, Al Rahim. Why? 
is because that Ar-Rahman and that Ar-Rahim who establishes the truth plain and simple, who makes it crystal clear, that Al-Wadud and Al-Ghafur and Al-Ghaffar, he could have let me die 26 years ago believing that Allah was a man. When I see those people, I see myself. He could have let me die on the falsehood which is not plain and simple. So those of us who are trying with all their level best to practice this land, and those of us who are kind of wobbly in our movement, we're kind of shaking in our movement, we're stumbling in our movement, we should remember and reflect on the brother who's standing in front of you, the situation that he had, the situation that Allah had him in and then guided him just like maybe he guided you. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could have left you after the bomb scare, before you re-entered this building, whatever you and Allah knows best and then you know best what you've been doing as Muslims for Islam or attempting to do something for Islam or not doing for Islam. Allah knows what you've been doing. He could have let you die. He could have actually allowed a real bomb to go off and he could have blown you up. Allah could have allowed you to be blown up on what you know after Allah you've been on. And you know, brothers and sisters, brothers and sisters, you know what you've been doing. You know if you have been giving this deen, which is a favor to you, you are not a favor to it. It is a favor to you. You and you and you, you all know. We know what we've been doing. We know what we've been doing. And this is amazing how we think that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not know. And one of the things that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam here has told us, ثَلَاثٌ مُنْجِيَاتٌ وَثَلَاثٌ مُهْلِكَاتٌ There are three things that save, and there are three things that destroy. And one of those three things that the Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam said, save is what? خَشَّةُ اللَّهِ تِسْتِرُ وَالْعَلَانِيَةِ To fear Allah in secret and in open. To fear Allah in secret and in open. This is the haqq. This is the truth. Plain and simple. So this evening, inshallah, we intend to give some examples on how we can stick to the truth which is plain and simple. How we can make our feet have the strongest of spiritual super glue to stick to the Sarat al Mustaqim. This is what we want. We want to make sure our feet are firmly planted on Sarat al Mustaqim because the Prophet alayhi said, Innam al A'malu bil Khawateen. Actions are judged by the last thing you do. By the last thing you do. And for those of you who have heard some of those tapes that I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give me the reward for any good that you heard from them, from me, and protect me and don't punish me for any of the things that I made mistakes or committed sins on, you've probably seen my style and presentation and sometimes I become graphic. I'm very graphic. إِنَّمَ الْأَعْمَالُ بِالْخَوَاتِينَ Actions are judged by the last thing you do. Like the young man around my age, Muslim, who was caught doing something that he shouldn't have been doing and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala caused him to have a heart attack and he died. It can happen to any of us. None of us should be running around saying that we're as firqatun najia. We're the sage sex. Where do you get this concept from? Is that the truth? Plain and simple? That you and I are the sage sex? So we'd like to cite some examples on how we can stick to the truth that is plain and simple. 
And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also, who has created only one heart in the human being, not two, to allow the young man on my left to be able to listen to the words also and gain benefit and pay attention to the teeth. Amin. The first thing that comes to my mind that we can do to stick to the truth, plain and simple, and this is not necessarily in any order, and we hope to continue this particular point tomorrow at the Brixton Masjid, inshallah. The first thing that we can do is to stay far away from that three-letter word. And that three-letter word, I'm not going to tell you what it is, but it's three letters in English and it's three letters in Arabic. To stay away from that three-letter word that throws people, more people than anything, into the hellfire, headlong. The Prophet alayhi has informed us, ma min mu'min, ma min abdin mu'min, there is no slave, believing slave of Allah, no believing slave of Allah, illa walahu zamb, except that he or she has a sin, ya'taduhu al-fayna ba'd al-fayna, that he does or she does time after time. أو ذنب هو مقيم عليه or a sin that he or she commit لا يفارقه حتى يفارق الدنيا that they will do continually and for you English majors there's a difference between continuously and continually that he or she does continually and they won't be separated from that sin doing that sin until they depart from the stinking dunya. Because it stinks. Then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, إِنَّ الْمُؤْمِنَ خُلِقَ مُفَتَّنًا تَوَّابَ النَّسِيَّةِ إِذَا ذُكِّرَ ذَكَرَ رواه الطبراني That the believer is created the believer is created, tested, tried, repentant, forgetful. Tested, tried, repentant, forgetful. When he or she is admonished, they remember the admonition. Those of us who want to keep our feet on the truth, planted on the truth, which is plain and simple, we should stay away from that three-letter word of which I'm forced to tell you it is, is S-I-N. Thou noon back. Zimb. Sin. If we stay away from sin, we won't have time as one of the people of the past said, if my sins had an aroma, if my sins had a fragrance, if my sins had a scent, S-C-E-N-T, no one would sit close to me. You would sit far away from me. If we can just focus on staying away from sin and think and say what the Prophet will say. The Prophet, nafsi, nafsi. When the human being will go to Adam, and Adam will say, go to the next one. Nuh, and Nuh will say, go to the next one. Ibrahim, and Ibrahim will say, go to the next one. And so on, until we get to Muhammad, alayhi salatu wasalam. If we can just focus on ourselves, nafsi, nafsi, I'm afraid for myself. I'm afraid for myself. Because it's not guaranteed that we're going to say for those of us who are praying Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah after saying it to the right, to the left there's no guarantee there's no guarantee if we can focus on staying away from that thing called sin this will help us this will assist us 
and being on the truth which is plain and simple. Sin will keep us united if we disunited. If we continue in sin, sin has the intrinsic nature to divide Muslims. Because there are two cliques for those people who think that cliques are a bad thing. There's the praiseworthy clique, there's the batana that is mahmuda, and there's the batana that is mazmuma. There's the praiseworthy clique. And there is the unpraiseworthy click or blameworthy click. If we commit sin, intrinsically sin has the ability to separate a brother from his brother, a sister from the sister. As the Prophet ﷺ said, مَا تَوَدَّثْنَانِ فِي اللَّهِ جَلَّ وَعَذَّ أَوْ فِي الْإِسْلَامِ فَيُفَرِّقُ بَيْنَهُمَا إِلَّا ذَنْبَ يُحْدِثُهُ أَحَدُهُمَا he said, no two people who originally love each other, and there are people who I can say specifically, back in the state, who hated me, hated my gut in the area of my city that I grew up in. We were mortal enemies. We were enemies. I mean real enemies as in nine millimeter get out of my face enemies. Enemy. And now we love each other for the pleasure of Allah. We're standing next to each other for the pleasure of Allah in Salah. We buy things to each other. No two people who originally loved each other for Allah or for Islam, for Allah, Jalla wa Izza, or Islam, then they become separated. Why? Because of a sin that one of them committed. You see what sin can do? When we don't commit the sins and we try to stay with the truth that is plain and simple, it keeps us united. But when we commit sins, and because out of the love that the brother has for you, or the love that your sister has for you, they tell you, Akhi, Ukhti, you know what you did. You know I love you for the pleasure of Allah. But here, here I have to hate what you have done. I have to hate for Allah. As we mentioned today, that the Prophet wasallam said, مَنْ أَحَبَّ لِلَّهِ وَأَبْغَضِ لِلَّهِ وَأَعْطَى لِلَّهِ وَمَنْعَ لِلَّهِ فَقَدْ اسْتَكْمَلَ الْإِيمَانِ Whoever loves for Allah, hates for Allah, gives for Allah, and withholds for Allah, they have perfected their iman. Akhi, you know what you did. You know that that wasn't right. Sister, you know that that thing you did was wrong. Fear Allah. Be, fear Allah and make repentance. When the person continually does it, this drives a wedge between them. And now one person who is trying to stay on the truth, which is plain and simple, is separated from their beloved, who has deviated in their actions, and we don't call them deviants, we won't, don't want to be in the habit of calling Muslims deviants all the time. They have deviated because of some sin. It causes a wedge between us. So this thing called them or sin has the innate nature of causing a breach between us. And if we would try with all our level best to stay away from sins, which is very difficult, especially for the youth, for the Shabbat. In this place, I can see it. It's very difficult to stay away from sin in this type of institution, where the young men are walking around, especially probably in the summertime, muscles rippling, robust, and the sisters are looking at them and they turn their heads, and the young ladies are walking around with almost nothing on, and the brothers have to turn their heads, and you look up, and there's one, and down there's one, and to the right, and to the left, and there's another one. You turn away, and there's another one. It's difficult. Allahu Musta'an. But if we focus on our temporal existence, how short the time is here, and that this thing has the ability, called sin, has the ability to throw us 
into the displeasure of Allah, thereby being thrown into the hellfire, I think that we'll be able, if we have that attitude, to stay as far as we can away from it, without being extremists, we will be able to keep our feet on this truth, which is plain and simple. Another example of sticking to the truth, which is plain and simple, is not relying just on the books of Islam. It is not sufficient to rely on the books of Islam. Rather, we should rely on the books, the ways the ulama, the scholars of Islam, are explaining what we're reading in those books. We must stay in constant contact with the ulama. And those people who would defame, degrade, chide, upbraid, revile, repudiate, ridicule, look down at their noses, call bad names of the ulama, those people who would do these things, it is clear, as Ibn Qayyim, al jawziyyah rahimahullah says that anyone who exposes the sin of an alam has executed or performed a greater sin no matter what sin that alam has committed. To expose the sin of a scholar is to commit a greater sin. Why? One of the effects that happens from that, the result, is that you turn that person away from the person who has ill towards those people who have lesser ilm or no ilm, who are the ignorant, and then the masses become misguided. So we must stick to the book, the pure classical books of Islam, the way that our illustrious scholars, past and present, explain it. They are the stars, they are the inheritors of the prophets to keep our feet on this Surat al-Mustaqeen and to keep our hearts on the truth which is plain and simple. Because for surety, if we don't rely on their knowledge, if we don't rely on their knowledge, then whom are we going to rely on? Who will we be left to rely on? There are only two types of people, either those who know, those who don't know. So we must look at the ulama, not as demigods, not as angelic creatures who are ma'sumun, who are infallible. We look at them as human beings, but we look at them in light of how our noble messenger, alayhi salatu wasalam, said what he said about them that the likeness or the superiority of the scholars over the rest of you, me first, is like me, the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, over the common worshiper. And in another narration, the likeness or the superiority of the scholars over you is like the moon over the rest of the stars. This is one of the ways that we can stick to the truth, plain and simple. Another way that we can stick to the truth, plain and simple, and we don't have that much time, and whatever Allah wills is, and whatever He does not will is not, so we shouldn't be, uh, have dismay, we shouldn't be upset because of the delay. Whatever Allah wills is, and whatever He does not will is not. Another way that we can stick to the truth, plain and simple, is to constantly ask Allah to guide us to that which is true. Oh Allah, guide me to that which is correct. Oh Allah, keep me with those people who are correct. Those people who have the truth. How many of us ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Oh Allah, Guide me to the truth. 
And those of us who say it, then right after that, we act like the people whom Allah says, غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين After we asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to put us on the path of those who had the truth, plain and simple, we act right after the salah, Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullah to the left, as those people who Allah says, غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين As Imam al-Shawkani said, some of the Muslims are like the Maghdubi alayhim, and some of the Muslims are like the Dalun. How? Those who are Maghdubi alayhim, we know who they are. Those are the individuals whom Allah is angry with. Those people whom the Prophet pointed to, as Ibn Jarir al-Tabari said in his tafsir of al-Fatiha. Those people called the Yahud. Whom the Prophet sallallahu not only said that that was them when they asked him, who are they? He pointed to them. Sunnah Qawliya and Sunnah Fi'liya. He said it and he pointed to them. That's them right there, the Jews. Why? Because they have ilm, they have knowledge, and they don't act on it. That's not us though, right? That, we don't fall in that category. We have knowledge and we don't practice it. That's not us. So let's move to the Dalun. They are those whom the Prophet said in the same narration, pointed to them. They are the Nasara. And why? Because they don't have any knowledge. They don't have any knowledge. And they just blindly follow whatever their ulama said. Just blindly. Like the cattle when it rings the bell. When the bell is rung, they just follow. Ding, 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 ding. And they just go through the pasture. But I don't think the Muslims are like this either. Or are they? So when we ask Allah to keep us on this truth that is plain and simple, Allah will guide us and keep us on the truth. And if you are on the truth, even if you're by yourself, even if you're by yourself, don't despair for one iota of a second, for one nanosecond. For one nanosecond. Don't despair if you are trying to stick to the truth and everyone else is against you. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to reward you and instill in you patience and well-being for trying to stick with the truth that is plain and simple. And lastly, but not leastly, and of course there could be more, from people who know more about this deen of Islam than I do, which doesn't take much. We have to, in order to stick to the truth, follow the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because without the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, without sticking tenaciously, to the example of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, without following him, among other things, we lose two important things. قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّنَ اللَّهَ فَاتَّبِعُونِي يُحْبِبْكُمُ اللَّهَ وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ Say, if you really love Allah, then follow me. Allah will love you and forgive you of your sins. This is the way we gain the love of Allah and that's His forgiveness by following the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa How can you or I think that we're on the truth and we abandon the sunnah? Even if that sunnah is not an obligatory sunnah. Oh, I don't have to do that. That's just the sunnah. You hear it all the time from the mouths of Muslims. I don't have to do that. That's not wajib. Where's your proof that that's not wajib? Where's your dalil? I don't have to do that. That's just mustahab. That's just masnoon. That's just sunnah. That's mandub. Do you have it like that with Allah that you can leave off a sunnah? You're that sure of yourself that you can leave off the sunnah? And then when your scale is put in front of you and it is measured your deeds of this life, and that sunnah that you left off back here in this unscrupulous dunya, when the scale might have been 
might have been even. That sunnah that you left off could have tipped it just a little bit. Maybe a hair. Allah knows best. So that you would have the majority of your good deeds outweigh the bad. But because it's only a sunnah, only a sunnah, not wajib, I leave it off. You want to be on the truth? You want that everything that you touch turns to platinum? Not gold, platinum? Do you want your dua answered? Do you want to be successful? Then follow the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam no matter who dislikes it. And as for you who mock the sunnah, woe to the mocker. As for you who mock the women with niqab, woe to the mockers. As for you who mock the people who put the henna in their beard, woe to the mockers. As for you who mock that which was revealed by Allah Azza wa Jal in the example of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, woe unto you. But for those of you who desire no matter who or what to stick to the truth plain and simple by following Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to continue on your trek, on your journey, and trying to keep to the truth. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for those of you who take this deen that is a favor for you, not a favor for Allah, a favor for you, not a favor to Allah, a favor to you and me. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us realize in reality that the truth that is plain and simple is not by any means necessary, but by following the Qur'an and the authenticated sunnah, the way that the companions and those who follow them after them understood it and practiced it. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make the truth plainer and more simpler for us. Ameen. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to pour in our hearts love for each other. That He makes us of the hizb, of tahrir, of rancor from our heart. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes us of the party who have liberation of hatred from Muslims from our heart. That's the kind of hizb of tahrir that I want to be a part of. The one that has his heart liberated from hating my brother. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us true tabligis. The real jama'at tabligh calling to the Qur'an, the authentic sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, while not looking down at my brother who attributes himself to that. And that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes us real mujahideen of the jama'at jihad, making jihad on our nafs. Because whoever makes jihad on his nafs, for who are mujahid. Whoever makes jihad on his nafs, then he is a mujahid. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us all ikhwan in this muslimin. Ikhwan, real brothers, loving each other, visiting each other, regardless, regardless of some philosophies or ideologies. Visiting each other when we're sick. Aiding each other when we need assistance. Loving each other, because for surety, brothers and sisters, we don't have anything but ourselves. Cardboard can't sharpen steel. The only material that can sharpen a Muslim is another Muslim. That's what we need. We need each other. We need each other. If we don't have each other, we don't have anything. That's the truth, brothers and sisters. Plain and simple. And if I have said anything correct, then it is from Allah. And if I have said anything that is incorrect or sinful, then it is from myself. 
O Şeytan ve sallallahu ve sellem ve bârek alâ nebiyyina Muhammedin ve alâ âlihi ve sâbi ecma'in Subhanakallahum ve bihamdika eşhedü en lâ ilâhi ile ente estağfiruka ve atûhu ileyh